I'm Richard Thorson. I'm the chair of the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Department and uh, formerly a vice president for development. Aerospace engineering had a gradual beginning at the school. Initially, there were a few courses, and then it became a minor in mechanical engineering. This is back in the 30s. But the full-blown aeronautical engineering department was created in 1940. My name is Gunter Georgie, and uh, I worked on the lunar module 50, 50 years ago. So this is my 50th anniversary of having dealt with the technical problems of the lunar module and space travel. My job was to, to do the thermal analysis of the lunar module. And the lunar module is a vehicle that was designed by Grumman Aerospace in Bethpage, Long Island. And it was designed for NASA. So NASA was a super contractor, and they kept on checking what we were doing, and we were interfacing with NASA and the astronauts continuously. The thermal analysis part of it is that the ascent stage was a rather is, was by far the most complicated vehicle of the um, Apollo mission. If you did not do some active thermal control. It, Temperatures could vary from absolute zero, which is minus 460 degrees, uh, to direct facing the sun, depending on the surface, and that's plus uh, 360 degrees. And one of the reasons why it's also important is, now you've got astronauts in there. If you freeze an astronaut, that's no good. And if you boil an astronaut, that's no good. I began at Grumman in that capacity uh, toward the end of the Lunar Module project. But the way this all came about was that Grant Hedrick, who was the Vice President for Engineering for Grumman, and himself an outstanding engineer, uh, was very enthusiastic about creating ties between industry and academe. And I met him at a conference and we got talking and next thing I know he was inviting me to establish some kind of a relationship with Grumman and what emerged was a part-time consulting relationship that went on for 25 years. I would think the most important thing that I have found is communications. To do the heat transfer problems for, for, the, for the lunar module, I had to learn about orbital mechanics, how the uh, lunar module was in orbit, what the orientation of it was with respect to the sun, and, you know, and, and how all of the different components uh, all worked together. So today, it's really essential that you deal with other people who know their own area of expertise and jointly with, with me and others jointly work on a problem. It's fascinating to think back on how well the uh, Apollo program performed in the lunar module in particular, uh, given what by today's standards were primitive tools. Uh, today we would do it so much uh, more easily and, uh, and in some sense better because of the tools that we have. But this, these new tools permeate all of the aerospace industry, not just uh, space exploration. There, there, there is a point that I think needs to be made as we look back on 50 years of, of adventure, I call it. Uh, there are skeptics along the way who think that an awful lot of money was spent that maybe could have been spent in other ways, and what was the purpose of this? I'm often reminded of what the Associate Justice William O. Douglas, who was an avid mountain climber, once said when he was asked, why do you climb mountains? And his answer was simply, because they're there. So maybe space exploration is justified simply because it's there. And what we'll discover is totally unknown and hopefully good.